Do you like the Olympics? Most of us do. You know, they go back to ancient times. Do you know the story of the great and mighty Israelite Samson in the book of Judges? If so, do you ever wonder what would have happened if Samson actually competed in the ancient Greek Olympics? Well, let's find out. I'm going to read to you this book, Samson at the Olympics. The Israel team will be a pushover, Lampus assured his teammates. We train daily while well, they spend all their time praying, working, and keeping their law. As the top athlete from Sparta, Lampus was confident he had nothing to worry about. The Greeks were the best athletes in the world. To prove it, the Greek city-states had invited other nations to compete in their Olympics this year. I've heard, laughed Persis of Athens, that their twelve tribes can only field one team among them. Why, I've heard, excuse me, interrupted a scraggly-looking stranger with long hair and a beard, I represent the Israeli Olympic team. So you actually have shown up, answered Lampus. You must enjoy taking a whipping. Where's the rest of your team? I am the team, replied the stranger. All the Spartans and Persis burst out laughing. What is your name? Hercules taunted another. No, it is Samson. Never heard of you. I am Lampus, the greatest athlete in the world. When I wrestle you, I'll throw you clear back to Israel. Pride goes before a fall, replied Samson and walked away. The Greeks had heard the rumors of a strange man who could catch 30 foxes in one day and kill a lion with his bare hands. It was said he had dragged a 40-ton gate 40 miles in one day. As long as he never cut his hair and beard, God gave him supernatural strength but the Greeks would not believe this. They did not believe in the God of Israel either. The first event was a discus throw. Lampus confidentially threw the discus 170 feet and was in first place. No one will top that, the Spartan thought. That guy, Samson, probably can't even throw at 50 feet. You need a shave and a haircut. Lampus teased Samson as he was about to throw the discus. Lampus was silenced as the discus flew clear out of the stadium and into the sea. The crowd was amazed. Some thought he had used a magic discus, which flies like a bird. The judges, who were Greek, didn't want to declare Samson the winner. It doesn't count, they ruled. Why won't you count my throw, protested Samson. It has to land on land to be able to measure the distance, they replied. Samson felt cheated, but he knew he could not do a thing. His discus was under the sea and would never be found. The next event was the javelin throw. Again, Samson would be the final contestant. This time he made certain the judges would know where his javelin landed. He threw it right into the chief judge's chair. No fair trying to kill the judge, the angry officials ruled. Samson's throw was disqualified again. Lampus had now won two gold laurels and only four events were left. The third event was the foot race. 
He may be able to throw like a god, thought Lampus, but I am the fastest man in the world. Just in case. Right before the judges dropped the flag to start the race, Lampus put his foot in front of Samson's foot. The Israelite ran so hard that, rather than tripping Samson, Lampus was thrown upward for a complete backward double reverse somersault. Samson tripped Lampus, the biased judges declared. The Israelite is again disqualified. Samson was enraged, but he knew he couldn't reverse the judge's decision. At least Lampus didn't win, and there will be three more events. The next event was the broad jump. Say, Samson, the judges told him, you don't have a number like the other contestants. We will put number XXXVL11 on you. The numbers were made of stunly and hung around his neck. Ten pounds of rock should slow him down, the judges thought. To their surprise, his jump was a full 30 feet further than Lampus's 26 feet. Samson won his first laurel. Wrestling was the next to the last event. The judges again changed the rules. Because you won the last event, Samson was told, you must wrestle everyone to win. Still, Samson threw his first three opponents into the audience. The rest forfeited, except Lampus. He is as strong as Hercules, thought Lampus, as he too flew from the ring. Well, he did know better than the first three of Samson's opponents, the judges gave Lampus second place anyway. The final event was boxing. We'll try one more time to let one of our teams win, the judges agreed. Here at the Olympics, Samson, we box his teams. The whole team of Sparta will compete against Israel for the championship. Twelve strong Spartans against me and my god. That sounds fair, Samson replied, tugging at his beard. Samson charged at the Spartans. Before they knew what hit them, they were all knocked down. I won the Olympics for Israel, thought Samson. The judges had other plans. We can't have a foreigner winning our games, they said to each other. Let's make Samson a citizen of Greece and record that a Greek won, they said. They presented the idea to Samson. All you have to do is let us make you a Greek citizen, they told him. You will have to cut your hair and beard to look Greek. You can still say to Israel, you're an Israelite, and your hair and beard will grow back by the time you return home. God would know I broke my vow and cut my hair. He knows everything, replied Samson. Then you will not go down in history as the Olympic champion, you will be forgotten. I would rather go down in history for keeping my vow to God than for winning Olympic laurel, replied Samson. Samson was right. That's why we won't find his name mentioned in the ancient Olympic record books. Instead, we read about him and his feats of strength in the book called the Bible. If you like this and my other books, they're all available for sale on Amazon.